Hello and welcome to the Overwhelm is Optional podcast. This podcast is for you if you value not burning out, you're sick of it, you're sick of the stress and exhaustion, you want your life back. Hello, welcome to this week's episode. So this week's all about procrastination. Are you somebody who procrastinates a lot? Do you see it as a big issue in your life? It's very, very common, isn't it? So we're going to look at it in a different way, in a more self-compassionate way, in a more useful way, I hope. So when you get stuck in a cycle of procrastinating, putting off something, doing everything except the one thing that you really need to do, instead of trying to push through that as if, well, I ought to be better, blah, blah, blah. I want, I'm going to invite you to notice the procrastination. Notice what you're choosing to do instead. Notice what's coming up for you. And I'm going to suggest that procrastination isn't terrible, that it's not a failure, that it's not because you need to be more disciplined. I'm going to suggest to you the idea that procrastination is useful. Useful? It's annoying. Yeah, it can be annoying, but there's a reason you're procrastinating. And I'm going to invite you to pick one of these two choices. The first one is you just don't really want to do it. It's not that important to you. It's boring and tedious. You wish you didn't have to do it. It's just something that has to be done. So this kind of thing for me would be kind of admin stuff, like low level stuff like entering, updating accounts on a spreadsheet. That's my procrastination. And I've tried lots of things like allocating a day a month, putting it on a to-do list, and it's always going to get shifted. And I'm kind of okay with that because I know that what happens in the end is I set a deadline, I set aside a whole day, and I just do it in one day. And once I get into it, I actually really enjoy it. And then it's not worth punishing myself, labelling myself as a procrastinator for the rest of the year. It's pointless. If... I want to do a bit of it in the year because it makes me feel better because it's offloaded some of it, then I can choose to do that. So at the moment, I have got update accounts on my list. Actually, I can't even see it in front of me. So it's somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's it. It's in my system. It's not in front of me because I don't need to know. So if I'm going through the things that I get to choose from, my choosing list as opposed to my to-do list and I see on their update accounts and I'm like oh yeah that's kind of a low level job that I'm quite happy to do and it feels good I will do it but if that doesn't happen I won't and nothing terrible will happen because I've never been late with my accounts and I'm not going to let my accountant down because I, I just that's not me I don't like doing it that makes me feel really uncomfortable so my accountant sets a deadline I'll just do it I'll meet the deadline because that's me so you have to work out how it works for you so if it's something you don't really want to do you can postpone it you can acknowledge I don't really want to do this it's not actually that important to do it right now yes it would be like really good to get it done early but does it really matter yes no you decide because it's your life you get to choose but just notice the procrastination and, and, and examining it can be really helpful so if it's something tedious and boring without a real deadline can you postpone it and that's okay are you somebody who works better with a deadline? In which case, give yourself a deadline. And if you really want to do it before the real deadline, then a really good practice is just to make artificial deadlines, but take them really seriously. So with integrity, you tell yourself you're going to do it on that date. And because you live with integrity, you do it. Because not doing it would be too, would be more uncomfortable. So you could try that. Is it also something that has to be done? So very often we have all these good ideas. I think in general, this would be on my get better list. You know, I ought to do more exercise. I ought to do this. I ought to do that. And very often, actually, no, I didn't. I don't need that at all. Because although I'm not doing exercise, I'm, you know, lugging rubble or lugging wood. I, I do a lot of wood processing because our house runs on wood. And I do a lot of gardening and it's all quite heavy lifting. And actually, that's my exercise and that's good. So why am I adding, you know, do some weights when I've just lifted heavy bags of rubble? Well, because it was a nice idea at the time. <laughs> that's all. 
you know, getting older, lifting weights is good for you. I quite like lifting some weights, messing around with some kettlebells, but it keeps falling off my list because the kettlebells are in the garden and then I forget and then it rains and then I can't do it because it's raining and then blah, blah, blah. and then it's so boring because then it's weighing on me. Oh no, now you haven't done what you, what you were going to do with those weights. No, but I did just lug, you know, 20 bags of rubble. So that's okay. So some of it's letting yourself off the hook. Are you getting really stuck in a, I need to be better, I need to be better. And therefore the procrastination is your resistance to that. You're actually, I'm standing my ground. There's nothing wrong with me. I don't need all this criticism. Thank you very much. So can you talk back to your mind if it's putting pr unnecessary pressure on you? Can you lift away some of that pressure and go, you know, I've had, like, not me, but an example would be I've had get up early and do yoga on my list for 20 years. And do you know what? I don't really want to. It's not my thing. Let it go. This is this is true with a lot of things, isn't it? Projects that we don't really want to do stuff we don't want to finish. But it's very, very difficult to let go of unfinished projects. Well, I dare you. And now now I'm talking to you. I'm like, oh, so there's an unfinished dress, which I thought would be easy to make and is just like ridiculous, like way beyond my skills. But I, I've spent hours like working out how to do it and it involved ironing and bits of paper and oh my god really not my kind of thing I'm a throw stuff together and you know I like making stuff if it's fun and easy and pretty fast otherwise I'm like that's a bit fiddly that's not really my kind of thing and I remember talking and this has got to be four years ago talking to somebody in a dress dress shop and they said just bring it in and we'll help you <laughs> that's not going to happen because it's been in that bag for four years and as I'm saying this I'm thinking it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. Yeah. What can you let go of? So if you're procrastinating, examining it as a useful signal. Why are you procrastinating? Well, a lot of the time it's because you don't really want to do it. Does it matter? Can you stop putting so much pressure on yourself? And then the other thing is you do really want to do it, but it's an up level. It's something out of your comfort zone, but you're really committed to it. But actually, deep down, you're scared. So there's fear and anxiety, because if you actually do this thing, stuff's going to change. Woo! And the mind doesn't like change. And that's it. So to me, it's either boring and tedious. Can you postpone it, let it go or just get it done or delegate it or something, you know, deal with it, like just get rid of it or, or I don't know, give it somebody else to do or don't do it. Not everything has to be done. Get the pressure off yourself. Or if it's the opposite, which is it's pressured. So I'm avoiding it because it's new and it's scary. Well, that's your choice, isn't it? You don't have to do it. You can stay exactly where you are. You don't have to, you know, do the next level in your business or the next exams in your career or whatever it is, the next project. You don't have to do it. There's nothing wrong with you. If you stayed exactly as you are, you're just as lovable. You don't have to justify your existence. So let's turn this around. If you are genuinely doing something that's difficult and you're procrastinating, recognise you're scared and you have every right to be scared and that's okay so make it fun because if you really want to do it which I think you do you've got to make it fun you've got to get out of your own way you've got to not take it so seriously it's, don't make don't let it be heavy because the more we procrastinate against something like that the heavier it becomes becomes this big block and then suddenly we do it and it's like oh this feels so good so on the wall in front of me is an experience from about three months ago of something I was dealing with in my business and I wrote the shame and fear is such a nonsense when you get on the other side of it the shame and fear is such a nonsense when you get on the other side of it and it is and the good thing about doing difficult things the things that scare us the things that we avoid because although we really want to do them actually it's really scary but we think we ought not to be scared and we don't know why we're procrastinating that kind of stuff that's really good to get done because you grow and you face a fear and it's fun. It's so relieving. But how do you do that? Right. Here's a good idea. So instead of making it to this big, big thing, you just look at what's going on. So you've been trying to do this thing for ages, but you're avoiding it, avoiding it, avoiding it by being usually by being busy. I think it's really surprising how many light switches I have cleaned when I'm not quite ready to do the difficult thing. Like dusting happens like plants, plant leaves get 
wiped. Yeah, all sorts of weird cleaning. Like, I just wouldn't do that. That's definitely a procrastination. And when I find myself like that, I also notice that sometimes I need that time because I'm actually processing something. I'm about to do something difficult. And by cleaning, it's almost like I'm moving into my body or I'm I'm just allowing the stress, the circles of doom to go temporarily by doing something. It's mindless, isn't it, cleaning? But it's quite satisfying because it looks different immediately. So it's quite a nice thing to do. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm generally not somebody who wanders around cleaning. So if I've started doing funny cleaning, I know that I'm going through that process. And that's OK, because I recognise that. And then what I'll do is go, right, a really good thing to do is either just do it for one minute. So like if I was writing a book, then I would start by opening the Word document and writing a title or even writing a book or even writing blah, blah, blah. But just the opening of the document, it, it edges you in. It's like, oh, I've done that. You do, even though you think, oh, I haven't achieved anything, you have because you sat down and you did it, you dared. And that starts to break down the procrastination. So it's a bit like that story of, um, I can't remember where, which book it's in. So a woman who just needed to lose those weight and whoever she was working with, the coach, or whatever, said, right, just bounce, jump once. That's it. So in front of the telly, she just get off the settee and bounce once. I don't know if I've got the story right. It doesn't really matter. And then the next day she bounced twice and the next day three times, blah, blah, blah. And then like six months later, she'd lost the weight and was really fit. One bounce is all it takes. One bounce. Make Do the smallest thing you can do to bypass your amygdala. So this is this comes and the other thing might come from Kaizen as well. So the book, One Small Step Can Change Your Life. Kaizen, I'll just get it for you. Go read it if you want to. Robert, Robert Mora, Mora, M-A-U-R-E-R. -E One small step can change your life. The Kaizen way. I highly recommend this book. It's very small. Obviously, it's very small because the whole point is to do the smallest thing that has the biggest impact. So if you're procrastinating about something that's scary, you can acknowledge the fear and go, OK, so I'm just going to take tiny, tiny steps and doing the smallest thing possible bypasses the amygdala so the amygdala are the kind of like fear centers the old 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 part of the brain that just goes uh oh you can't do that that's really dangerous which is what's happening whenever we try and do something difficult so acknowledging that and just doing oh i'll just i'll just pretend i'm not really facing that fear i'm just going to open that word document or pick up that pen or whatever it is i don't know what you're trying to do but for me it would probably involve writing or recording a video or whatever and just starting and just do it badly so if i i'm not a fan of making videos but i recognize that that's part of my work and that's okay so what i usually do now is just press record and talk rubbish until i get past that and then i can start doing more useful um inspiring talking so do the smallest, smallest thing you can do. Once you get past that, um, a really good technique is the Pomodoro technique. And that's where you set one of those. To, you don't have to have this, obviously, but the Pomodoro is the tomato timer. Um, so you, it's 20 minutes. And there's some theory that it works because it takes your brain about 10 or 20 minutes to get past the resistance. And I found that to work really, really well. So you set the timer for 20 minutes. Um, or is it 25 minutes? Doesn't really matter. But you set the timer and you just stay. You're not allowed to move. You just do it. So if you're writing something, you just do it. And I find a really good technique when I'm writing is when I get stuck, I just write blah, 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 blah. And then the next bit comes and then I go back and fill in the blah, blah bit. And that's OK. Or I type really, really fast. Can't read it. <laughs> but that's OK because it's 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 moving. Something's moving. Shift is happening. So and then when the um, timer goes, you can then go and have a 10 minute break and that might be it for you. And that's OK because it's the smallest thing. But what I usually find happens is three Pomodoros in. And I'm like, I don't want that timer going off. I'm busy. 
and I've gone into deep work. And once you've gone into that state of flow, then you get addicted to it. And once you get addicted to it, particularly if you're doing something difficult, it's very addictive once you go past the fear because it's such a good hit. It's like, yes, I am magical. I am awesome. I'm powerful. I just opened my laptop and wrote a book. And I mean the words, a book. <laughs> so. That's what I have to say about procrastination. Procrastination is getting stuck in our head and not doing the thing we really want to do and then beating ourselves up about it and doing everything other than the thing we really want. Well, the thing we think we ought to be doing. So your choice is to pause, identify whether it's something you don't really want to do and why that is, and then either get rid of it, postpone it or give it to somebody else. Or it's something that actually is scaring you. And acknowledging that with some self-compassion is really helpful. And then doing the tiniest, tiniest thing you can do. So you're doing it anyway, but you're not forcing yourself in a really horrible way. You're doing it in a really kind way. You're just sneaking past the amygdala and going, I'm just going to secretly open this Word document or whatever, make this phone call, whatever it is. And it's not a big deal. Don't worry, mind. You don't need to panic. I'm not really creating change. I'm just going to spend one minute. It's only one minute. You can cope for one minute. So you're kind of like talking yourself through it and being really kind. And then it becomes addictive. And if it's not addictive, if you're not really enjoying the difficult thing, then why are you doing it? You really do have to start questioning because if you're stuck in a procrastination pattern and it's making you miserable, well, that doesn't sound like a way to live. So maybe you picked the wrong thing and you need to change your mind. And if, as I say this, you're going, no, I really want to do it, then you know that that's not the case and you just need to keep practicing tiny ways in until you get past the fear. If, however, I'm saying to you, maybe you pick the wrong thing and you need to change your mind and you're going, oh, my God, I wish I could. Then there's your information. So be honest with yourself. Procrastination is just useful information. What's it telling you? See you next week. To find out more about my tiny, huge, life changing practices, please visit www.heidimark.co.uk.